Hello, listeners. I am the narrator. Today's story takes place in the town of Devil's Lake, North Dakota, a small remote town in the middle of nowhere. The year is 1985. The date, August 19th. This tale will bring with it mysteries, intrigue, lies, hidden realities, and the blending of fact from mythos. Join our hunters as they seek out the truth and find those who are missing in today's story of Music Mayhem. Welcome to episode one of, well, this is we're calling the Hunter's Haven, mm-hmm. which is inspired from a YouTube series we did, but yep. we're just taking that name, placing it here. So Hunter's Haven, and the name of the mission, the name of this campaign is uh, Music Mayhem. Mm. So I have that. Um, uh, I'm going to just break us into right from the start. If you don't know who these characters are, I'm going to just have everyone introduce themselves real quick, starting to my left. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm Kenny Whitlock, uh, the boy detective, right here in Devil's Lake, North Dakota. I'm here to solve mysteries and eat some some Kugel crackers that I make myself. Nice. <laughs> and played by Skyler. Oh yeah, played by Skyler. <laughs> He's the other guy. He has a more normal idea. Uh, next. I'm picking up some hiccup vibes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, as I, was, as I was driving home from work, testing out the voice, I thought to myself, kind of sounds like a young Jay Baruchel. It is very, good. It is very close Jay Baruchel. <laughs> so Dave? Um... So I am playing, uh, not sure what the voice we're going to use yet. Maybe I'll just use my regular voice. Go for it. <laughs> Maybe with a little slight accent. Uh, we'll go for something with an accent, I guess. <laughs> uh, name's uh, Denny Rogers is the name. Uh, playing the Snoop character, don't you know? <laughs> so good. Got this, this nifty new camera here. Uh, won it from the Radio Shack grand opening. Perhaps you heard about it in the paper. <laughs> That, that's great. <laughs> yeah. I think that's pretty I'm solid. Get over the voice. Okay. Uh, finally, Emily. Um, I'm not going to do a voice because I don't do good voices. You're doing a voice. This is my voice. Exactly. Yeah, that's also, the voice of Bobby. <laughs> Anyways, um, I'm playing Bobby Eastwood, also known as Bob E. I'm playing the crooked. I steal stuff for mm-hmm. funsies. That's it. Sorry. Oh, Probably steal somebody's homemade crackers. You know, I don't take my crap, my cooler crackers, man. Excellent. All right, and with that, now we all know the characters. Now I'm going to dive us into this world. Got ourselves a little intro here. Yeah. In the small, sleepy town of Devil's Lake, North Dakota, you best be careful of what lurks around the corner. Rumors and whispers of things going awry. A modern-day menace praying from the shadows. This town of woe filled with more tragedy than joy. This week's news, three kids have gone missing. This morning, that number now has jumped to nine. The front page of the local news reads, Sam and Max Parker, kids of the mayor, have gone missing. Alongside them are four of the kids who all were at the same party thrown by the local boy, Tony McCook, who has also gone missing. Mayor Samuel Parker has set a reward for anyone who can find his kids and their whereabouts for $25,000. The newspaper article continues, but for the most part, that's all you need to know. With that now known, you now have a mission, all three of you, for all your own personal reasons. Find these missing kids. Their lives are ticking through the hourglass. Like we- days of our lives. <laughs> We find our three quote-unquote heroes, we'll call them, uh, at the local bowling alley. Uh, we're going to call it uh, Bob's Bowls. Oh. Yeah, we'll just call them Bob's Bowls. Bob's Bowls is the name of the local alley. Uh, we find uh, Dennis Rogers, or Denny as he likes to be called, uh, bowling with his nephew, Kenny. Uh, it is Kenny's birthday. Or was Kenny's birthday a few days past, and Dennis wanted to bring old Kenny for a fun game of bowling. Uh, Bobby is here alongside them, not by choice, but rather came to just have a night to herself to bowl a solo game of bowling. But 
Bob's Bulls is a packed place tonight, and she got tossed into their out their row. Is playing a game with the two of them. Yeah, the more you practice, the less it hurts your arm. Mm. And this is where we find our three characters with uh, Dennis having just read this article out loud to them while they're bullying a frame. Anyways, I was uh, I was looking to snag some coupons from the paper here, and I turned it over to this front page story. Don't you know? And I saw those. The, those zeros in my eyes, they went wide like a couple of zeros themselves. <laughs> I saw, and I thought, oh, gee, sure bad about them kids, but that's a lot of dough they're laying out. Twenty, what was it, $25,000? You betcha. Oh, my gosh. That's a lot of dough. Wow. That's what I was saying. What would I do with a... But Uncle Danny, what would you do with all that money? Oh, I don't know. I mean, probably upgrade the mower, I suppose. Well, yeah, you could probably get a real nice one. Uh, Kenny is Kenny is very uh, nervously looking back and forth over at Denny, or sorry, Bobby. Uh, kind of like nervous because. He doesn't really, uh, I mean, he knows how we got in this situation where she's bowling with us, but uh, he's not excited about it <laughs> after after her bullying of him back in school. Um, so he's just kind of, he's just kind of hesitant and trying just to like not talk to her. Uh, hey, uh, I don't mean to switch the topic or anything, but uh, who's, whose turn is it to bowl? It's mine. Oh, how about it? Then move. I'm Okay. Kenny sits down. Uh, just the blue one. The blue one's mine, but you know, I don't know if you brought your own ball over here. You brought your own ball? No, just like from the rack. Then it's not yours. Well, I would. That's the one I was using. It's got my. It's the right size for my fingers. It's the right size for my fingers too, so I'm gonna use it. I mean, I can't. I can't. I can't stop. <laughs> oh wow! What a quinky dink! You guys have the same finger size, eh? <laughs> You know, the grip is very important in bowling, don't you know? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's what you always taught me, Uncle Denny. It's a really average finger size. Lots of uh, people have that. Sure. It's not the size of the fingers. It's what you do with them. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, Kenny, Kenny, why don't you step out? of? You're still in frame there as Denny holds up his... <laughs> His new camcorder. <laughs> Kenny steps out of the way, but then he leans into Whisper. He's like, ah, are we supposed to be recording people that we aren't related to? I mean, I already thought it was kind of weird that you were recording me, but she's not <laughs> even like in our family. Kenny, the way I sees it, this is a great learning opportunity. For you? No, you can compare your form. To oh, Bob's. it's a learning opportunity. Wait a minute. Are you saying Bob is good? Hold on. And then at this point, Kenny just stops and watches his body well, goes I... to bowl because he doesn't think that she's that good and worth learning from. I ignore both of them because they're annoying and weird. And mm -hmm. I pick up the little man's ball and I go up to throw it mm -hmm. and I kind of slip a little bit and uh, it bounces. Oh. The Talon style. Yeah, the classic. And the uh, bounces. <laughs> but did you have the bumpers up or not? No. Oh. It stayed in the lane, though. I hit one pin. I think Denny's pretty hardcore. He wouldn't put the bumpers up. Well, no one has bumpers up. Oh, people of taste and honor, I see. Okay. <laughs> so. Uh, if we fail, we fail with our chest. You knock over one <laughs> pin, and then the ball comes back, and you throw a second one. How's that one go? Um, It doesn't bounce. but Improvement. Uh, Really hurts my shoulder. I think I put too much, too much yank in that. Um, I didn't hit any with that. So I guess oh. the bounce was better. Good thing this is the tenth frame, huh? Uh, Sam. See, I don't think that there's much I can learn from that, Uncle Denny. <laughs> well, that's where you'd be wrong, there, Kenny. You see, from where I'm standing, it looks like she's keeping her thumb in there too long, throwing off the release. Oh. So it's a it's a video of what not to do, guys. So then yeah, I, see, I turn let's... around with the ball and I, I just kind of roll it, hoping to hit your toes. Oh, 
this is backwards wee bowling thing <laughs> right here. But do you jump and do spin? Do I jump and spin and go? <laughs> <laughs> I do oh. not. No, I try to dodge out of the way of this ball rolling to, towards you. Are you trying well, to hit him? hundred percent. Okay, hey, that's not groovy there. Ooh. <laughs> And the, uh, the balls aren't supposed to touch this side of the floor. I wanted to bowl by myself. Well, I don't know why we have to suffer for that. Yeah, I don't even have my steel toes on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kenny, Kenny picks up that, or he, he goes to sit down and picks up that newspaper because I think Denny is, is next on the, um, on the frame. Yep. And he's just looking at the article about the missing kids and thinking about what it would be like for him to get his uh, big uh, glory back if he were to solve such a mystery. And that's what's kind of going through his mind of like, what if I did? Man, everybody would love me again. Um, <laughs> and I'm just looking through to see if there was anything, any like really key details in there about like maybe the party uh, that was going on. Uh, what was the name of the kid who was throwing the party? Oh, yeah, his name was T- Tony McCook. Tony McCook. Yep. Also, it, the newspaper article does go into way more detail. I just didn't say it. So right. if you have any questions about any of the kids, also if you have any questions about, like, the past kids that went missing, I... So was, the whole point is we're trying to find these kids? Yeah. Alive? Uh, well, the newspaper article says their whereabouts, so... So you'd get paid if they were not mm, alive. I mean... He would prefer if they were alive when you found. Dude, I don't find these kids and then just kill them because you can. <laughs> I don't. You don't do that. Do you get paid if you find one kid, not mm. all of the kids? What if we find part of a kid? Okay, so the newspaper article, as you read it, the way the way the mayor, because it has a quote from the mayor, it seems like he only cares about his two kids being found, but also. What if the, we find the other kid? The article also. The article also assumes like. If you find his two kids, you're probably going to find all the other kids. There's not, like, multiple kidnappers. If or I was a there? kidnapper, I wouldn't keep them all in the same place. See, that's what all the cops think. <laughs> if you find one, you'll find them all. Oh. Hmm. Spoken like a true professional, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Hypothetically. Hypothetically. You are the crooked, after all. <laughs> you got to always be thinking <laughs> the angles, you know? <laughs> really put some thought into her character. <laughs> So in this all out. I didn't mind. even tell her before, and we're doing a kidnapping kind of game. <laughs> it's all that true crime I watch, guys. Oh. Out of curiosity, does it say was so? Is Tony one of the kids that's missing, or was yes? It just, oh, he okay. was one of the six kids that went missing over the weekend. Uh, right. So the date is Sunday. Okay, those kids went missing uh, the uh, two nights before a Friday evening. So. Uh, the newspaper article goes briefly into they were having a Friday night party. Yeah, yeah. It went late into the night. The parents woke up to none of the kids being home, and they can't find any of the six kids that were at the party. And then does it say if there were more than just those six kids at this party? Or uh, were those six the only six? Those were the only six kids. It was a small party. Yeah, a like small a group lame of friends. party. And yeah. it's more like a close-knit of friends kind of party. Yeah. yeah. Sounds like our party. Yeah, no, more like say. a more like a fun slumber party, if you, oh. if you will. Yeah, and there was three boys, three girls, so you know those kind of fun oh. high school high school slumber parties. A one to one ratio. Yeah. So back to the bowling alley. Yeah, There's yeah. This, a familiar sight if you're an irregular at Bob's Bowl, but Denny's unconventional approach to bowl the ball. Oh boy. Then he's kind of talking to himself. It's all about the approach there, Kenny. And he's he's set up the camera on the table. Kenny's tape. just reading the newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> Kenny's falling off focus. You just hear Kenny go, uh-huh. <laughs> set up the camera to the record himself. <laughs> it's like resting on the table right next to the chili cheese fries. Nice. <laughs> it's got a couple of fries in frames. In frame. <laughs> you can see a little blob of chili just rip off one of them. It's very out of focus. It's 100% <laughs> focused on the fry, not the bowl. <laughs> so if you've ever seen the movie, not, not the extremely goofy movie, okay. but the goofy movie. The right? first one. Yeah. Yeah. The first one. <laughs> 
Where he's going off the... Not Shrek 2. Kind of that Shrek. kind of vibe with the perfect cast. So yeah, we got the perfect yeah. bowl. So, you know, he's, he steps up. Uh, he blows on the ball. A little mm-hmm. huff, huff. Waxes it with yeah. his sleeve of his bowling jersey. Um, and he a little step to the right. A step to the right. One, two, one, two. Uh-huh. Takes three steps forward. One step back, uh-huh. a little cha cha. Yeah. Get the booty bopping. Uh-huh. And then with a swing of the hips, he steps forward and releases. Yeah, roll those dice for me. Oh, yeah. I want to say accurate. No, this is 100% see how many pins he knocks over. Oh. Nice. <laughs> uh, seven. Seven. Nice. He knocks over seven. Ooh. Bummer. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's still pretty good, though. What is it, nine? It's nine pins, right? It's Total? Ten. 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 That's still pretty good. Yeah. Three left. Beats, oh. beats the one. Yeah, beats the one. Right. Yep. So you got a little bit of indigestion from, it's from the fries. those chili cheese fries. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then he, he goes ahead and finishes. Uh-huh. Uh, do I have to roll? Again? Yeah, roll. I'm going to see. This is oh. just a straight success. So I'm going to assume he's getting a... What's your... Uh, oh, wow. your, your cool. Cool. It's going to be a plus one for my cool, making it a seven. Yeah. um, You can do it. It's just, uh, um, oh. I'm going to give you a choice here. Uh, either you knock over and you save the spare, but you also slip and fall in the process, <laughs> or you catch yourself at the last second from falling, but you gutter ball it. Denny always picks up the spare. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, yeah, you make a total fool of yourself. Uh, and this is, mind you, right when the camera finally gets in the oh, focus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just, it just adjusted just in time or, to or see. Just... Kenny leans over. He's like, Uncle, I don't even think you had this adjusted right now. <laughs> he tweaks it and all of a sudden, Oh. Whoa, hey. Spare. Kenny, are you okay? Oh, I'm all right there. Oh. I wonder if he got that on camera. We could turn that into AFV, don't you know? <laughs> Oh my god, that's out yet. Yeah. <laughs> that might have been nine. <laughs> Denny's like, I've got this idea for a new show. <laughs> yeah, we could uh we could get twenty five thousand without having to go find kids, missing kids. <laughs> Screw those kids. Yeah. I think that's how much they give out too. It's a lot for the winner. It is a lot. Um as uh, as Kenny's picking up Uncle or helping Uncle Denny to his feet, he says uh you know, I I think maybe just because well you said it's Sunday, right? Yeah. Oh shoot. Uh, I mean I don't have work <laughs> this week because you know I'm still really focused on my uh, my career as a as a kid detective, <laughs> which is doubly weird when you're an adult. Uh, sorry, he didn't say that. But anyway. <laughs> what did he say? <laughs> sorry. I'm still focused on my career as a kid detective. Uh, I don't know if you got work, but. You know, maybe we could try sleuthing around. That that would be a real birthday present to me. You know, I, I got some sick days, and man, those chili trees fries are really upsetting my stomach. Wink, wink. <laughs> <laughs> might have to call in sick tomorrow. Oh, man. Uh, I think you might. Not, I don't think you should eat those anymore, Uncle Jim. <laughs> I think you might have an acid reflux problem. Maybe stick to some things that are a little less acidic. Uh, yeah, Bobby, maybe you should finish those off. All right. Can't help myself. I'm, I'm, I'm lactose intolerant. so. Okay, well, it's like that fake cheese, I think. Mm. Uh, so I don't think there's a, yeah, a speck of lactose in there, Just, if I'm being honest. Does Pepto exist yet? Was lactose intolerant sure a thing Pepto back exists. in the 80s? <laughs> yes! <laughs> it's not new! I don't know, I didn't see it anywhere on my 1980s <laughs> well, popular think, things. Uh, mm-hmm. I think me and Kenny ate most of the ones with cheese on the top. Now, also, Pepto was definitely around by this yeah. point. <laughs> Just, just for safety. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, sure, Bobby. If you want to eat some of these fries, yeah, go for it. I don't care. I could freeze my favorite number. I'm just trying to think how we get 
Bobby. Oh, I mean, to Bobby, join Bobby, us. if you you have any questions, uh, you can ask. Yeah, the guy you over the, here is talking. Yeah, about I know. Ask the is, guy holding the newspaper. Maybe this is this you is see. rough sauce because Bobby just thinks you're. Twenty-five k. Inadequate. I'm just saying, Uncle Danny. I mean, twenty-five k. I mean, that would really make up for missing days of work, no less. You know. What uh, what what makes you guys think that uh, you've got what it takes? find these kids. well um you you probably remember back in the day you remember the whole mystery of the missing mayor's dog the mmmm you are so unlikable <laughs> that's what he was going for <laughs> as long as you're referring to in game and not out of game <laughs> Like, I, I can't see a world in which my character would ever want to associate with yours. Then maybe maybe she focuses more on Uncle Denny. Well, to be Uncle fair, there Denny, could, what, there, what there are your qualifications? Be, you could see him as such a big pushover that you could just take the 25k straight up from, from him. Fair enough. That that could be your in on it. Push I also, him just like I pushed him in high school. I also really like the idea that after I say the whole bit about the missing mayors thing, you immediately turn to Uncle Denny and say, what are your qualifications, <laughs> Uncle Denny? <laughs> That's good. That's good. Hey, we'll play with that. Yeah. Let's, let's go from there. Well, <clears throat> I've got a successful marriage <laughs> oh. got partially raised three kids and very observant uh, and well just for example just the other day I uh, I saw a Bigfoot whoa you saw a Bigfoot yeah I was out in the woods on one of my lunch breaks I mean my lunch break I don't take multiple lunch breaks <laughs> Wait, hold oh, on, but, you, many but you do things. take them in the woods? Well, yeah. You gotta you gotta enjoy nature, Kenny. Oh, yeah, I forgot you're like a lumberjack or something. I look work at the lumber mill, so I'm out in that neck of the woods, so to speak. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> Anyways, I was metal detecting. And, uh... Caught a glimpse of something running through the trees. Pretty sure it was Bigfoot. Wow. <laughs> and in your immediate thought was was Bigfoot, not a large hairy man. What is yours? Well, usually a large hairy man. Is your first thought a large hairy man? Typically, yeah. Yeah, I thought it might have been Tim going on his lunch break jog, but. <laughs> I mean, he, he actually is a lumberjack. He cuts down the trees. Yeah, he's he's an interesting fellow for sure. Uh, but when I went over there and investigated for boot prints, uh, it's just a big old bear footprint. Not oh, not gosh. a bear print, but uh, like a like foot. A bear foot. You like sure? Foot you sure a... it just wasn't one of those hippies? You know, those those drug induced fiends. Uh, walking barefoot here in the woods. In, in North Dakota? No. <laughs> All the people on meth are over in South Dakota. Yeah, they like the warmer climate. <laughs> but Big it's not words. out of the question, I suppose. But then I, I went to rewatch the tape because, you know, I, I film all my metal detecting. That's well, at least since does. I won that camera. Before, I just took a picture with the Polaroid. <laughs> It's true. He has he has many many tapes of his metal detecting. Oh, Kenny loves them. Man. So so, do these guys have any experience with like the unknown at all, or are you just a dad and you're just annoying? <laughs> I I think <laughs> is this what you ask them? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, are you just asking us to know, or are you asking out of character? <laughs> um, in character. Let's just say that, okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm insulted, but uh, <laughs> if you're asking about my experiences with the paranormal, uh, man, uh, I think I've seen some weird stuff, but I don't know if I've come to enough conclusive evidence to suggest that anything's paranormal necessarily. Mm -hmm. Although, there's a part of me that really believes in aliens. But I also will admit that that part of me was ignited after I saw Star Wars Return of the Jedi. <laughs> and it was pretty dang awesome. So maybe it's just wishful thinking. Is your weapon the metal detector? 
<laughs> yeah, I didn't know we were talking about weapons, but no, that's a delicate instrument. <laughs> I wouldn't, wouldn't want to damage my Technetics Mark I model. He's got a special case for it and everything. I believe it. They call it the coin computer. What about you, Bobby? Do you think the supernatural exists? It could. You know, I had an Aunt Linda. Uh, she used to say she could talk to her dead dog. So there's there's that. Hmm. Hmm. I'm pretty sure I saw... I don't think I got to meet her. The dog? Either. <laughs> I don't think I talked to Aunt Linda. Why are the dead dog? <laughs> what, did it, what did it say? Oh, yeah, that was, well, maybe that was before your mom married Mark. Yeah, it must have been. Well, uh. <clears throat> Are you adopted? What? No. <laughs> Just have stepdad <laughs> situation. Uh, anyways, the dog, I uh, was always going on about stuff it buried in the backyard. I found a few of the things, actually, with my metal detector. Hey, yeah, if you could talk to dogs more often, they're always burying stuff all over the place. That'd be a great way to get all your, all kinds of cool stuff while you're metal detecting. You know, maybe me and Linda are related by blood. Perhaps I got a bit of the touch. Oh, hey, there you go. Hey, you think maybe we could find a dog that is dead that knows something about these missing kids. Mm. You know, the more I think about what I just said there, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Like, why is the dog dead, and what? Why is it no? You know, it would have had to die in the last two days. Maybe it knew too much. Oh, and then it died afterwards. Oh, yeah. See if we go figure. Or, or alternatively, maybe what if we went snooping around over at Tony's house, and uh, we brought your metal detector along, and maybe, maybe one of the kids dropped something. That'd be a clue as to what happened to him. What's oh, it, uh what's Tony's last name? McCook. McCook. Yeah, yeah. McCook. Mm. Over at the McCook house. Uh, I think his older brother might have been in our class. Mm. Uh Stef Stefan. Oh, Stefan. Also Or was um, it Stephen? The article was continued on to the second page. Oh. And if you kept reading, I'd rather read more about the party incident and stuff. Um, the only kid who wasn't reported missing by his parents was Tony. That's because his parents were out of town. Huh. Oh. He was throwing a party <laughs> at their place. They don't get back till Monday, and they don't know if their their kids. Well, they don't even know their kid is correct. Missing. They don't oh, know no. any of this actually. The police haven't paged them. <laughs> they are in the Bahamas. <laughs> yeah, those international calls are expensive. Yeah. They're, they're the cheaper police... after seven. Uh, but they, <laughs> they, yeah, no, but they, they, they know their kid's kidnapped. They just uh, can't find a soon enough flight to get back. I mean, so... it's the Bahamas. I mean, you're not going to leave the Bahamas. Yeah, true. They're really racing kid. back, you know. And, uh, <laughs> um, but, yeah, so they're, uh, the, they, there was no adults around when they were throwing that party. It's... So, technically, the house is empty. Mm. They don't get back till Monday. No. Oh. But, uh, Bobby, as to what else we have to offer, or what else I have to offer, I got this, uh, this great new camcorder here. It's a JVC video movie, don't you know? You see, uh, look, it's equipped with a video playback. <laughs> you look in the site here, the viewfinder. Oh, I'm getting a little. <laughs> 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 look in the site here, in uh you can see what you just recorded without a t television. Hmm. And it records the tape. So then if you want to watch it on a television later, you just pop that tape right out and put it in the VCR. So, if we want to review whatever we find out at the McCook place, can view it back through this video movie. Okay. Yeah, but I, I just want to loop back around, Bobby. Uh, what What are you? Uh, are you trying to volunteer with us or something? I mean, what are you? Why are you getting in on our our detectiving? Well, you've been really invasive with me since I've been here. So you came to our bowling alley. Really, all up in my grill. So 
I was just returning that to you. Um, <clears throat> I think out of out of the two of you, I I really have the most experience here. Um, I have a lot of experience with missing things, and missing kids are basically the same. So I feel like I would be able to find them, and I could potentially use your help. I mean, if you just need a ride back home, I'm sure we can give you a ride back home. You don't have to tack along. I remember your experience with missing things. Like that time. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, no. (laughs) Like that time I came out to my shed. (laughs) But I I helped you find that, didn't I? (laughs) Yeah, you're trying to steal my... My rack off of my my mower, right off the hood where I attached it with the paxi. Potato, potato. You said you were looking for your lost frisbee or something. Like I don't know how it would have gotten into my locked shed, but <laughs> he's right. Seems a little suspicious, but uh, you know. I mean that shed just opened right up for me, so I feel like. Maybe you didn't lock it as well as you thought you did. I suppose Doug could have left it open. Doug's my son. One of my sons. But what what sort of experience with missing things do you have? Um, I like to set people up so that they can find their things. You know, it's a good learning experience for for everybody. So I foster those situations in which people have to look. Oh, perfect. You're like a secretary. <laughs> You're just helping out the, the rest of us. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, I, I tell you what, if yeah, if anything, if you're if you can take some notes for us. While we kind of take a look around and maybe dig some stuff up and find some clues, I guess that would be of use. Hey, you any good with uh, cameras there? I know how to point and shoot things. That was very foreboding. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you see, sometimes uh, with this fancy new gizmo, uh, can't always get it to record. I kind of have to I press the record button, but it won't record. I kind of just press all the buttons at the same time, and it works most of the time. <laughs> does it Does it have batteries? Oh, yeah. Hmm. I got a, a backup one, too, in the car. Hmm. Well, I'm trying to remember if Denny has a car. He doesn't have it. <laughs> He have a car? In he your does, backpack, you have a backup have a battery. You, we walked to the bowling alley. <laughs> and you offered me a ride. <laughs> I didn't know we didn't have a car until then. You don't remember walking? <laughs> we we took the mower. <laughs> <laughs> that would have looked so awkward, but also also that definitely feels like small also, town. Also, the, the bowling alley is like two blocks down from yeah. Denny's house, so it's not. That so it funny. looks like we'll take my car. Oh, well, at least she has a car. We don't have to walk. Oh, you got a car? All right. (laughs) All right. uh, All questions answered. She's the driver. I acquired (laughs) one. Why does she make everything make me feel uncomfortable? (laughs) Everything she says just makes me feel nervous. Like I shouldn't talk to Sheriff Steve. (laughs) About what I did after balding. Gotta rename the sheriff. (laughs) (laughs) Deputy. Can he be? Is that sort of a a feeling like a butterfly in your stomach? No, Uncle Denny. It's not like a butterfly in my stomach. I know what you're trying to do, Uncle Denny. (laughs) You're trying to tell me that I need friends. (laughs) And I already told you that I go home and I get on my. Oh shoot! What what kind of computers do they have? Do they have a computer? Macintosh. The old I, Macintosh. I get onto one. My, I get onto my Macintosh version 1.0. Yeah. I I type out some TXT documents <laughs> as I solve some mysteries. I write down a lot of notes. 
I switch over and I write my Star Wars fan fiction. Oh, and <laughs> and that's that's what I that's what I do. You know, I don't need friends because that just distracts me from from my publishing. Were they even called fan fictions back then? Oh gosh, she's listening. Oh, how embarrassing. <laughs> Uh, I said, uh, no, I, I, well, they're like mysteries. They're Star Wars mysteries. It's just it's set in the Star Wars universe. Oh. But it's like, uh oh, where did my missing lightsaber go? Uh oh, what happened to Luke Skywalker's missing child? You know, <laughs> just, you know, crazy stuff like that. Like, they got to go find it. Like, Han Solo's like, oh man, you know, I got to smuggle something somewhere. I feel oh. like you're the type of person that writes stories. Um, and you don't care that Luke and Leia are siblings. Okay, look. <laughs> okay, we're not gonna. We're not going into this. this. <laughs> let's let's get in your car and you drive us over to the Mac. The, what was it again? The McCook House. The Mac. I almost said Mac. You almost said Mac. <laughs> the McCook That's house. a different house. That's in over in California. <laughs> <laughs> let's go over to the mansion. The McCook House and let's let's just look around and see if we can find some stuff. I mean, we're not gonna be probably able to get into the house. Uh, that's breaking and entering. Mm. And as a as a professional kid detective, mm. uh, emphasis on kid. <laughs> we don't do things the illegal way. We got to do things the right way. So we'll dig around outside the house, see if we can find some clues. And then, you know, hey, man, we'll fit. We'll find a way to split the 25000 if we find these kids. We'll figure that out later. Alright, so yeah. I'm I'm okay to go. You guys will head to the car? Then, yeah. yeah. So Dennis finished up the last we, frame there, so Yeah. We we get into my car and I just kinda shove a screwdriver in the, the keyhole nice. and kinda jiggle it around a little bit and it turns on. Nice, yeah. Do you listen to any music while you uh, drive? It's whatever the person who owned the car previously <laughs> was listening to. There's like a don't like, change it. Like yeah. Credence tapes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like my my old share. Oh god. Share tapes. that's accurate. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. good. Yeah, that's uh, pretty good. So you're popping some share. Nice. Mm-hmm. Would this share uh, yeah. fall under like this observation of her starting the car like that? Would that fall under read a bad yeah, situation? Yeah, yeah. If you want to roll read a bad situation, you 100 percent could. Um. <laughs> Uh, what is that sharp? That is an eight. Mm-hmm. So you could ask one question from that list. Uh, what's my best way out? <laughs> <laughs> the the door. Uh, ah. <laughs> just I guess you make uh, when you see that you make uh, Kenny sit in the middle. I guess. <laughs> Uh, Kenny, Kenny, I'm Kenny, I'm imagining an old school pickup truck here where it's like just three seats. There's no back. <laughs> There's no back. So Kenny's just squashed in the middle. Kenny 100% sees her jam the, um, the screwdriver into the keyhole and turn it to start the car. And just thinks, man, look at how far you've come since school. You got an old beater truck here that you have to start with a screwdriver. Oh. <laughs> Completely a great detective. <laughs> yeah, I know. There by the kid detective. See, he notices the details. It's just interpreting them in an adult <laughs> scenario that he has a lot of difficulty with. So I just I crank my window down. Get some air. Yep. A lot of a lot of smells going on in here. Got some those, share bopping. Those those chili cheese farts are really filling yeah. it up. <clears throat> Yours? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's lactose. I was just oh, lact- <laughs> the lactose. There Quick, was fast acting. Fast acting. <laughs> so you guys drive along and you get to the McCook House. Like I said, it's like three blocks away. This house though, very big. Oh. Cooks do well for themselves. Not uh, as good as the Macintosh family. Not as good as the Macintosh family. <laughs> uh, but you guys get to the house, and when you get there, uh, do you see uh, the front door is got some yellow tape on it. It says crime scene. Ah, yes. That's exactly what I like to see. Our our uh, Devil's Lake finest doing their job, getting things all, all situated up for the crime scene. Uh, obviously... 
I still have this, so we won't have a problem. And he takes out this, like, child's, like, plastic uh, deputy badge that the police gave him way back when he did his, his mystery no. thing. It means literally nothing to anyone that's not just a child. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't actually give me any extra power, but in but, his mind, he still thinks he's that it was legit. So do you just walk up to the door and just... Open it while you're oh, holding. No, 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 oh, no, 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 no. He's holding not, the badge. He's, you're like, he's a, ah, uh, the, I'm here to solve the case. He just open the door and walk right No, 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 no. But if there's any, like, tape in, like, outside the house yeah. that's, like, blocking the front yard or something, he just goes right under it. Oh, yeah, Because sure. he established yeah. earlier, he's like, yeah. I'm not going to break There wasn't in. any tape outside of it. Oh, okay. It was just on the door. Well, nobody will ask us any questions as long as I've got this. You guys are all uh, the deputies, honorary deputies tonight, so... <laughs> Come on with me. And I go out and I start skulking around. Um, Just walking around the house? Yeah. Is it still light outside at all or is it kind of dark? It's near dark. It's around like 730, but in North Dakota, right. that's... Uh, oh, so I didn't say... We're, I did say in the start, we're in mid-August. Yeah. So yeah. 730, kinda... it's sundown near now, right. so... Uh, Uncle Kenny, I'm going to hand you this. And I hand him one of my, my walkie-talkies. I said, just in case, you know, you, you're looking at one spot. If you find anything, radio in. I'm going to look here. Yeah. Mm. Bobby, I don't I don't care what you do. What, what is the other? He's So he's searching around the outside of the house. What are Let you me, two doing here? Uh, Denny's getting all of his gear out of the back of the pickup truck. So he's got his camera on his shoulder. He's slung his metal detector. You walked to the bowling alley with he your metal detector. Rode the mow the lawnmower to the bowling alley with the, He never goes anywhere. <laughs> never know. Without his equipment. <laughs> He's got like this small like case that he like tucks into his jacket pocket and uh he's got like a, a Polaroid camera around his neck. Oh, that's basically his equipment. I'm just putting on some like black leather gloves. Mm, I start whoa. walking towards the house. Oh, okay. <laughs> you go right to the front door. Sure. Do you try it? Isn't he already inside? No, he's on the outside, just wandering no. around. Just wandering around the yard. All right, sure, I'll try the door. <laughs> Unlocked. Okay, oh. cool. I'll just go in. Sure, go right ahead. I'll, I'll look around. What do I walk into? Is it the living room? Is it? The... Uh, it's a front entryway. Uh, is there's there not solo much solo cups. Not much to note in the front entryway, uh, but to your right, you can see like a living room area, and you do see like cups and. Uh, the further into the living room you go, if you go that way, uh, you get back here and there's like a den where there's like a TV and a some. Is uh, the TV on? TV is not on, but there is a there is a speaker system that's on in the background. It's just playing some music, just on in the background. Some chair. Uh, it's been on for two days. It's plugged in, but yeah, it's oh been on gosh. for two days. So uh, it's it's currently system. playing a song by Tears for Fears called Shout. So. Oh, I love that song. Yes. Uh, do you want to listen to the radio or not? <laughs> no. Because it's... I'll I'll go mosey around the living room. Yeah, you just look around. Uh, and do you want to roll investigate a mystery? Sure. That's you just roll two d six, then you add sharp. That's not the best. So I got six. That's Shy. that's a fail. Well. So you just get nothing. You walk around and you just see what I'm telling you. <laughs> nothing else. You don't really see any other clues. Is there the is there anything um nice in this living room? Yeah. There's a coffee table and on the coffee table there is a gold plated cigarette tray. Ah. It's yeah. relatively small. Palm of your hand. Oh, okay. Can I steal that? Oh, of course. <laughs> You're the only one inside, too, so... Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> no no one's going to notice a thing. <laughs> Slip that uh, into my, my inner pocket. Ash and all. Honestly, probably the best <laughs> house to steal from, because they're the, the, they're going to get... My cooks are going to get back, so worried about their kid being gone. They won't even notice missing. That's <laughs> true. Well, they might want to have a cigarette. <laughs> uh, that's true. They might be a little stressed. Where do I get they're, they're smokers. They've got more than one ashtray, so I uh, keep an eye out for any more gold-plated ashtrays. Denny... <laughs> You saw uh, Bobby walk inside, and you're finished getting all your stuff. Did you follow Bobby in, or are you going to follow your nephew around the outside? Um, I am going to start sweeping the front yard with my metal detector. Okay. Just go to town with <laughs> yeah. metal detector. Nice. Okay. 
I, I get on the walkie. Uh, don't worry, Kenny. I'm just going to sweep the front yard here with the metal detector. All right. The old coin computer. Oh, sorry. I got to wait till you say like Roger or something. Or... <laughs> Over. Over. There we go. All right. That's great news. Uh, let me know if you find anything now. I think uh, that, that could point us in any kind of direction going further. Oh. Over. So, as for Kenny, you are walking around the back. Yes. And you spot that the back door is wide open. And oh. has a crime scene tape over it as well. Oh and my. you look through the back door and you see someone inside. <laughs> oh my gosh. That could, that could be Bigfoot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I get on the walkie-talkie and say, Danny, Uncle Danny. <laughs> What did you say that Bigfoot looked like again? Over. So while while he's uh, talking to his uncle, I'm just kind of moseying into the into the den area. Yeah, what are you saying? You're... Looking for jewels, clues. Yeah, clues, clues, clues. Yeah. clues yes. Uh, you wander back and you find like a nice little back little area. It's like a. Uh, it's not like a den, but it's like a a room that's uh, in between the den and the outside patio. A foyer. Like that sounds about right. Foyer, yes, a little area. There's a kitchen. Ta- there's a table out there. Um, and you're looking around that room, and you uh, hear a voice out the the sliding door, talking about Bigfoot. <laughs> oh my gosh, Uncle Danny, it's going it's going up towards the foyer. <laughs> so I uh, I'm just gonna start growling. <laughs> Okay. For for funsies. Okay. <laughs> you hear growling. Oh my gosh, Uncle Danny, I'm like 98% sure it's big for me. Over. Start stomping my feet. <laughs> How big are its feet? Over. Uh, I can't see its feet right now. Hold on, I'll get a closer look. <laughs> You're Kenny. stomping a feet. Kenny goes inside. It sounds like as Bigfoot's wearing boots because this room doesn't have carpet. <laughs> so it's very clearly sounds of boots stomping. Danny is making his way towards the front of the house. And he's like, Oh, gee, I can hear something. <laughs> yes. Does Danny run inside? Yes. Yes, oh, okay. He runs inside. Oh, yeah. Kenny is just very he, slowly creeping in. I'll out. get you this time, big <laughs> boy. <laughs> so are you coming inside? I'm slowly coming in from the back door. Danny's furiously smashing all the buttons on the camera to try to <laughs> turn on record. So as you guys surround Bigfoot, you guys both run into the same foyer at the same time to see Bobby just stomping around and growling. Oh my god! Gotcha this time. As, oh. as Kenny comes in around around the corner, I hit him with one of those. Ah! Oh my god! You're not Bigfoot. Where's the beef? Oh Jesus! <laughs> Oh, Kitty, that was a funny look on your face there. Oh, man, did you get that on camera? Let me see. <laughs> yeah, sure. She looks into I like the, the viewport. The view. Yes, you caught it on camera. That's actually just what you caught. <laughs> it's just, it's just that you finally got it turned on right when you get his face getting shocked. I do like the idea that the only clear shots you're getting on this camera <laughs> is basically the blooper reel of this adventure. Ah, <laughs> uh, guys, Bobby, what are you doing in the house? It, look, this badge only gives me so much permission. If the police came here and saw us in here, I, we'd all be in a lot of trouble. I'd probably get my badge taken away. Well, I really can't I, I lose that right now. I think we should probably hurry up. Yeah. 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 Let's hurry up. So, uh, are you you yeah. guys gonna search the house? I was gonna say I, somebody I, with better roles. Since you're you're than inside Kenny, now, Kenny house. takes a quick like look yeah, around. No, so you guys kind of look back, and uh, you ran through the room, but he looks back. I'm just at gonna the room. tell you, I I already looked back there and see nothing. Yeah, well, I can't trust look, your non-detective. And you see the room eyes. filled with red solo cups. Oh my gosh! Some of them are tipped over. Some spilled liquid. Uh, and then you see the TV's turned off, but you do hear the radio going on. Kenny picks up um, one of the uh, red solo cuffs and just sniffs it. Yeah. If you want to roll, both of you two want to roll, investigate a mystery. What, is it, what does it smell like? You were just disgusting. Alcohol. Oh my gosh. It smells like alcohol. <laughs> Adult beverages. <laughs> <laughs> These kids were committing a crime. <laughs> See, Are now, they even worth saving? I was kidding. <laughs> now, Uncle Danny, here's the part we have to consider. Now, if it weren't for the $25,000 reward, I'd be questioning whether these kids are even worth saving at this point. To be honest, they've, they've gone too far down the, the wrong path. Should we not present them to the police? 
Oh, yeah, then they can suffer the adequate punishment for their actions. Jury of your peers. Yeah, <laughs> peers. <laughs> All right, and then with that, he's going to start peers investigating the ear. Dennis, yeah. investigate oh. a mystery. It's a good it's, thing we're not using that mic. You're a rolling sharp. I got a total of seven. Okay, so you can ask oh, get one no. question from that list. <laughs> I got a six. Oh, that's shucks, huh? Sure is dark in here. <laughs> Is it dark in here? Are the it, lights on? No, it's dark. It, the only it's the light you guys have. Actually, no, because they left the scene as is, so the there is some lights on this room. Funny enough, this is like one of the only rooms that actually had lights on. Uh, I'm gonna kick things off with asking, what is being concealed here? What am I missing? That's a good question. Or what is being hidden from my sight? amidst this first area of our mystery per se okay so you are starting to look around and you start to lift some pillows some throw pillows that were on the couches and you ah, these are so tacky. lift up the throw <laughs> pillow and you find a wallet oh man i better keep this away from bobby i open up the wallet <laughs> the wallet is for uh a mr sam parker sam parker that was one of the kids that's been missing that's the mayor's son the mayor's didn't he have two? He has. Was a, it Sam and Max? Yep. Yeah. Son and Maxie. daughter. Son and daughter. Yep. I come walking up to uh, Denny and I say, Denny, look, I found Sam's wallet. It was underneath the couch cushions. Why do you think he would have left his wallet <laughs> if he was getting kidnapped? How do you think? I mean, who takes their wallet out, right? I mean, unless it slid out, maybe. I'm looking at it. Do I see, uh, what do I see inside this wallet? Not much because it's a wallet of a... <laughs> 17 year old kid right he's got his driver learner's permit in it uh he's got like five bucks and a couple coupons to uh, a couple gift cards to the local pizza ranch oh oh hey are you gonna use those coupons here well i mean i wasn't gonna steal from this oh. kid's wallet I'm hey what any. well check the expiration date maybe i mean if they expire you know at the end of the week he's probably not gonna use them i suppose that's a fair <laughs> point what does the expiration date say uh, august 25th that's it, a week from now oh man all right, well, if we haven't found them by then, we'll definitely have to use these. Yeah, I'll just have to hang on to these for safekeeping. Well, here, you hold on to the wallet. But, um, you know, the wallet being here uh, makes it seem like this is definitely the last place he was. I mean, if you would have left somewhere on his own wheel, he'd probably take his wallet. That's right. Now, here's my other question, right? So let's say these kids are in here. They're having a party inside the house. Someone kidnaps them. That means they're going to have to take them outside the house right to take them wherever they're at i mean unless they're still here which seems unlikely but also seems slightly possible since parents are gone but anyway let's stick with the first possibility that they got taken out of the house what if we go check outside the house where we're supposed to be just to be clear and see if there's anything that suggests that anyone was like hauled away you know any kind of tire tracks maybe even or something along those lines uh, maybe it'll give us an idea where we should go next. It's a good idea there, Denny. Uh, it's getting dark outside. Um, yeah, that's true. Let me see if I can find some flashlights. All right. So I'm going to... Hey, Bobby, I'm going to go rummage up some flashlights, maybe in the kitchen. I don't know. Okay, can I go upstairs? Sure, go for it. Uh, wait, Bobby. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> uh, I do want to point out one thing yeah. that I should make kind of clear. <clears throat> As you guys are looking through this room, you notice something odd. If these kids were kidnapped, there is no signs of a struggle whatsoever. Oh, maybe they uh, maybe they ran away. Can I find the, the kids' room? Yeah, go for it. Yeah. Okay. I just want to, I want to look around in there for maybe a journal, perhaps, yeah. or something. Um, yeah, go for, for it. This. Um, as you're leaving the room, you hear a shock DJ starting to talk over the uh, radio. Um, all three of you hear this. Uh, do you uh, you guys want to listen to the shock DJ or not? I, mean, no. I, I know that Kenny isn't, I mean, he's just waiting for the flashlight, so there's no reason why he wouldn't. Yeah. I'll, I'll listen, because I really liked that last song. Yeah, yeah, yeah so... Maybe they're maybe they're coming to town. Oh yeah, maybe. Yeah, that's a good point. Rummage up so, some tickets. As you guys hear, uh, a shock DJ kind of comes over the radio as the dance the end of shot shout by Tears for Fear. You hear him go, eh. "Hey there, folks! That was shout by Tears for Fears." 
Coming at you live from the Siren Song Radio Station. My name is DJ Repip, and I am bringing you today's and tomorrow's and yesterday's hits. Next up on this playlist, we got ourselves a classic, a billboard topping hit, The Power of Love by the Huey Lewis and the News. Hit it, Huey! And then you guys hear the... the iconic Huey Lewis thing and it just goes back to music. Right. Is that our monster? <laughs> hmm? Was that was that Tears for Fears just a, a siren song? <laughs> oh, it didn't get us. Oh, no. <laughs> and uh We've you cracked guys... the case. It's the shock DJ. <laughs> it's the shock <laughs> DJ. <laughs> you guys wander oh. around. Uh you guys separate to your different spots. Bobby, we're going to cut to you walking upstairs. Uh you're looking for the kids rooms. Yeah. It's just the one. It's is just the, Tony. Uh, is the, the stairs carpeted? Yeah. Or, okay. This house is very nicely firm, furbished. Um, carpet, nice carpeted house. stairs are hard for me. I kind of trip a little bit. Shag up, carpet. But I yeah. catch myself. I'm fine. Good. There's good railing there for a reason. You make it up to the top of the stairs and you see a few rooms. So you go around opening them. Are you looking for anything particular? Um, I'm looking for the, the missing kids room. Okay. So you open up first room uh, and it's like a master bed. Um, yeah. so you assume adult, so you go to the next one, uh, and you open it, and it's like a spare guest room. doesn't look like there's any posters, nothing in it, so you kind of think, eh, not, probably not. And then you open the last room, and it is filled with, like, posters of athletes. Okay, so I'll go in there. I'm just kind of rummaging, maybe for, like, a, a journal or a backpack or something. Uh, you start looking through, uh folders bags and stuff and you don't find much of anything and then you look in uh the cubby well you do find a bunch of his like belongings like everything's here in place there's nothing really missing and you also notice his wallet is also here this is tony mccook's his wallet's up here but that kind of makes sense because it's his house mm -hmm. so he wouldn't have it downstairs with him uh and uh you find you go to his uh can i can i can i check his wallet yeah go for it does he have any uh, Same thing coupons as or money? Just straight up 30 bucks. Oh, okay. Can I take that? Oh, yeah, of course. Okay. Uh, same thing as what we saw with Sam's. He's around the same age as Sam. He's got his learner's permit. Uh, and uh, same thing. He's got a few gift cards, but most of them are to, like, your local arcade. Okay. And also a gym membership for his own high school gym. It's kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and you just kind of, I don't know what you do with the wallet afterwards, but. I'll just kind of. Toss it, Toss it the okay. bed. And then you go to over to a dresser to keep looking. And those, I, I'm blanking blank on what they're called, but the dresser right next to, like, the right by the, right by the bed. The bedside table. Thank you. And you open that and you find a dream journal. Oh. Yeah. And he's been logging his dreams. It's even called Tony's Dream Journal. All right. So. Do I have to, can I read some of his dreams? Are there, do you have any dreams for me? Prepped? No. Uh, <laughs> but I will tell you, just briefly looking at more recent ones, right? You probably flip to the back and read mm -hmm. from the recent versus start at the front. <laughs> Makes more sense doing I that. I want to know what he's been dreaming about since he was 12. Okay, well, you're going to be here a while <laughs> if that's what you're doing, because it's packed. This thing has been written in since 12. Uh, no, you start at the back. Not really much to note. His dreams are wild and imaginary, as I say, very uh, sexually themed uh, due to the fact he is a oh, okay. teenager. Yeah. Uh, but uh, for the most part, nothing out of the ordinary for a teen. He doesn't have like reoccurring themes of monsters or something like that. It's just teeth falling out, teeth falling out, a lot of being laughed <laughs> at for showing up at school in his underwear, Ooh. you know, a lot of public embarrassment. You think Tony might have a problem with. Uh, humiliation. Mm. I have a big fear of that. So. Sounds like he's got some anxiety. That too. You know, fear of being rejected by his peers. Maybe All that's right. why he's hosting a party. Hmm, maybe we're diving too deep into town. Well, <laughs> well, so he's I, gone missing. I read that a little bit. I just kind of chuckle. Throw that on the bed too because... I don't want to put stuff back, you know. It doesn't yeah. matter. He's missing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you look, keep looking around. Not much else to note. You do notice that he has a giant duffel bag uh, mm. just sitting in his closet when you open his closet. Duffel bag filled with no clothes, though. So you would assume if he was to go somewhere plan, he would have filled the duffel bag with stuff. So it was just empty? Just empty. Mm. Just sitting there. All his clothes are in place. Doesn't look like he would have. Wasn't planning on going anywhere anytime soon. Mm. Um, that's it. There's not much else to note in this room. Very empty. The lights right. are off. I'll just, uh, I'll mosey out of this room 
Um, and, and back to that master bedroom. Yeah. You know, is there any kind of jewelry box? Yeah, there's a jewelry or... box. I mean, you're not gonna, are you going to take a look of it or just like... Um, just, I don't know. Does she got look like she got any diamonds? It's a nice pearl necklace. I'll take that. Okay. A nice yeah. pearl necklace. You just stash that away and then mm-hmm. slide the jewelry box back. Yep. In. All right. We're going to go to Denny in the kitchen. You are just rummaging around. <laughs> Anything in particular you're looking for looking besides for flashlights? Coupons. More coupons, mm-hmm. huh? Uh, ham sandwich, glass of milk. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No. There. You open the fridge. It is filled to the brim with food. I. It, you think maybe they filled the fridge up before uh, they left? <laughs> they didn't want old Tony to starve himself. Apparently. <laughs> How uh, did I notice on Tony's driver's license? Oh, wait, Kilix. No, we found Sam. Sam's. How Sam. old is Sam? Seventeen. Oh, okay. Yeah, learner's permit. Mind you, the newspaper article actually said the ages of all the kids, too, right, that right. went missing. I didn't say that, but if you wanted, you have the newspaper. How old was Tony? Is, 17. Is Tony. <laughs> 17. Do we have, like, a young one, or are they all the same age? 17? Okay, just going through the age. Also, if you guys just want me to name the kids, too. Sam Parker, age 17. Max Parker, age 16. Tony, age 17. Hannah Grower. Grover, Hannah Grover, age 16, Tim Redding, age 15, and then Michelle Mitchell, also age 15. Now, I do want to point out, if this is you reading the article, Denny, you recognize the name Tim Redding, for that is the name of your neighbor's kid. All right. Uh, Then Denny looks, finds like the junk drawer. He's looking through the drawers, the cabinets for uh, flashlights, maybe under the sink. Yeah. You look around, and it doesn't take you too long. Uh, just opening a couple drawers, you find uh, a drawer that's filled with batteries and flashlights and scissors and all sorts of stuff. And Classic there's junk drawer. There is exactly three flashlights, believe it or not. All working. Sick. Wow, isn't that? Who would have thought? <laughs> uh, so he puts the, or he grabs the flashlight, set those on the counter. He's like, oh, scissors. I was needing those before uh, and he takes the scissors and takes the paper back out and turns it over and starts clipping out those coupons <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> initially it, was... it all comes together huh? <laughs> and then as he's flipping it back over he notices like he takes a closer look at the names and he sees oh jeepers that's tim reddings that's jeff's kid Yep, it is now. <laughs> Jeff and Patty. Jeff and Patty. Oh man, that's hitting a little too close to home, literally. And I come back out to the living room. I found some flashlights, gang. Oh, uh, thanks. But oh, bad news. It's a real bummer. Tim Reddings was one of the kids who went missing. That's my neighbor. Oh, Timmy. Ah oh, man, that means that he was drinking too. <laughs> That's so disappointing. Kids these days, I tell you what, I mean, I, I might just be a kid detective myself, but I'm not somebody that really uh, partakes in the, in the beverages of the adult variety. Like some real Michael Jackson energy over here. At the same time this is happening, oh, he... Bobby walks back into the room. <laughs> and what says, you got Jackson? some real Michael Jackson energy going on here. Oh, I love Thriller. It's a great, it's a great music video. It's a great song. Mm-hmm. So I just, I want to, can I take the flashlights? Yeah, you, you well, hand you out the flashlights. Yeah, I, I, flashlight. I want to just start clicking through them, make sure none of them are like shaky, you know. Oh, okay. I don't know why that Michael fella always is always grabbing his package, though. I don't get that. I think it helps him hit those high notes. Oh, that's a theory there. Yeah. There are those flashlights. Did they pass your inspection there, Bobby? They'll do. I, I, I'll take one. All right. I take one as well. I take another one. And uh, I run back to the kitchen and grab some tape from that, that drawer, and I... Tape the flashlight to my camera. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. <laughs> nice. Why didn't I think of this before? Oh, it's like you got night vision almost. Yeah. Real night prowler. Yeah. And then with that, Kenny's going to head outside to check on his theory about the uh, the, the kidnap. Yeah, and with that, I'm going to have uh, all of you are going to start walking outside to follow up on Kenny's theory of... 
there's got to be some more information outside the house. And with that, we're going to end this episode. Well, it seems you managed to survive this episode of Hunter's Haven Music Mayhem. Congratulations. We hope you enjoyed this tantalizingly terrifying one-shot series as we at Session Zero Heroes play through a game of Monster of the Week led by Keeper Cameron Hogendyke. We want to thank you for stopping by and hope that you'll continue to support us and our channel by checking out some of our other shows where we play other tabletop role-playing games, such as our Benders and Brews show, where we jump into the world of Avatar The Last Airbender using the Avatar Legends system. Or follow us on social media such as Facebook, X, Instagram, and Discord so you don't miss out on our upcoming Dungeons & Dragons series, Criminals of Isla Numis. I'd like to say a quick thank you and shout out to the incredibly talented Simon Jones, who created the music for this series, which you're hearing right now, as well as during the intro. If you'd like to get your own custom music, you can check out Simon Jones Music on Fiverr to hire Simon to create the perfect music for your project. Of course, be sure to like, follow, or subscribe to Session Zero Heroes on whatever podcast streaming site you prefer, whether that be Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and everywhere else podcasts can be found. Or check out our website at SessionZeroHeroes.com. We hope our episode today gave you the spooky vibes that you're looking for this Halloween season. Scare you next time.